Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure today to rise and speak in support of the throne speech that was delivered to us last week. And I will not be supporting the amendment presented by member opposite. It is a privilege to have the opportunity to speak in favor of the important investments our, our government is making through these most challenging times to support families, businesses, and communities through a safe and stable recovery as we navigate the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Speaker, I can attest that it has been a very difficult 20 months for the people of Saskatchewan. It has disrupted all aspects of our lives, including the regular work that we do in this chamber. We have gone through a pandemic that is unprecedented. We have seen the challenges faced not only here in Saskatchewan, but around the world. Mr. Speaker, I believe that complaining and being negative all the time doesn't help anyone. Our government wants to build a safer, gentler, kinder society. We can only do that if we all work together and respect each other, regardless of differences in our opinion. We want to be the change towards a more positive direction. As the great philosopher Confucius said, if you are positive, you will see opportunities instead of obstacles. Our government is focusing on what is possible and believes that being productive is the only way to economic growth and prosperity for our pro province and its residents. Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me if I did not say a great thank you at this time to all the healthcare workers and all other frontline workers who have done an amazing job over the last 20 months. Unfortunately, we are not at the end of it yet. I know many frontline workers are still working long hours in our hospitals to provide care to those who are ill. Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank our police, firefighters, teachers, child care workers, and frontline workers in our grocery stores, restaurants, truck drivers, cab drivers, everybody who has worked so hard to keep our economy going and to give us a sense of normalcy during these difficult times. Thank you to all the nonprofit organizations who have worked tirelessly to support people going through COVID. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank those in our school system, to the teachers, to the teaching assistants, to the education assistants, to the caretakers, to the principals, vice principals, and to the superintendents who have done an absolutely amazing job during a very challenging time. Not, not only did they have to get the schools ready, but they were dealing with students who are under incredible pressure. Teachers are facing the usual challenges of their job, in addition to supporting their students through mental health issues and numerous other challenges that inevitably occur when people are isolated and unable to socialize. Mr. Speaker, we as a government are committed to working with the teachers and with the other partner groups to make sure we address those challenges so that our public school system works the very best for our children. At the beginning of 2020, this pandemic was unknown to all of us. It turned into a global health crisis that taught us that we must constantly adapt to, the, to its challenges. During this time, Dr. Shahab and our Premier have done an outstanding job under immense pressure to make decisions while supporting our citizens. Mr. Speaker, I was so happy to have my wife Seema attend the throne speech with me for the first time. She, she has been such a great support to me throughout my life. It cannot be expressed through words how grateful I am to my children, Simran, Indu, and Tejpal for their ongoing love and support. When I came to Canada as a new immigrant in the 1980s, I had no idea of what challenges lied ahead. There was a lot of uncertainty. Sometimes I felt fear and had many sleepless nights thinking about my family's future. But at the same time, I comforted myself knowing that with a positive mind 
and determination, I could move forward. I knew then, as I know now, that I cannot control the outcome, but what I can control is my actions and my attitude. Unfortunately, this pandemic is something that cannot be compared to normal everyday struggles or problems and uncertainties of life. No one is able and no one can predict how and when we can go back to normal. Nobody is trained to handle this crisis. Mr. Speaker, we as a province have made great progress getting vaccinated, but we still have a lot of people not vaccinated yet. Therefore, we still have to be vigilant. We still must keep socially distanced. We still have to wear masks when we go inside. The throne speech spoke of how our government recently enhanced the Provincial Emergency Operations Center to serve as a joint command center. This will help to better coordinate the pandemic response, ensure the right resources are in the right place at the right time, and provide administrative and organizational support. Mr. Speaker, this summer, when we were not in session, I went door to door to talk to my constituents. I wanted to get their feedback and to know what their challenges were. At the time, some restrictions had been lifted and people were enjoying the warm weather and time with their family and friends. Most of my constituents were happy with the way our government was handling things during the pandemic. Unfortunately, a lot has changed since then. With this fourth wave, I know that people are frustrated and afraid again. Mr. Speaker, I am so grateful to my CA, Cheryl, and I think she is the best, and to all our constituency staff around the province for the difficult calls they have had to answer during this pandemic. So many people are afraid for their safety and for their family, families during this pandemic. I have had some very difficult conversations with constituents. My heartfelt thanks to the caucus office for all their support and guidance in this new chapter of my life. Mr. Speaker, the throne speech highlighted many improvements in Saskatchewan's health care. This summer, patients at Melfort Hospital were added by the new 2.25 million CT scanner. This new resource will help people living in North, Northeast Saskatchewan by reducing both wait and travel time. Mr. Speaker, to reduce emergency room wait times in Saskatoon and Regina, engineering work is already underway on the new urgent care centers. These centers will help reduce wait times at emergency rooms by provi providing alternative care for many illness, uh, illness or injuries that require immediate action, including care for patients with mental health or addiction issues. This is in addition to a new website being developed by the Ministry of Health that will provide information for people at risk of an overdose. Mr. Speaker, our government has also provided 15 million to support pandemic research at the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization based at the University of Saskatchewan. As a world leader in infectious disease research and vaccine development, VIDO was the first Canadian organization to isolate the COVID-19 virus. The first to develop an animal model of infection and the first university organization in Canada to have a vaccine in clinical trials. Mr. Speaker, in the middle of these difficult times, investment is critical. As outlined in the throne speech, our growth plan objectives include the creation of 100,000 new jobs by 2030. Already, employment in Saskatchewan has recovered to over 99% of its pre-pandemic level. This was highlighted by September's job growth in our province being well above and the unemployment rate being below the national average. By the end of this year, the brand group of companies will be hiring more than 1,000 workers, bringing its workforce to 4,400 employees. More than half of these new employees will to be based here in Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, to meet demand, our canola crushing industry is undergoing a massive expansion. 
This year, a total investment of more than a billion dollars has been announced to expand crushing capacity. This includes the addition of two new plants to be built in the Regina area by Cargill and White Era. Cargill has announced plans to construct its 350 million facility at the Global Transportation Hub. And Waitera is currently looking at constructing in my riding of Regina Northeast. These investments will achieve our government's growth plan goal of having 75% of our canola production processed at home. Mr. Speaker, another remarkable investment in Regina is Canada's first wheat straw pulp facility. Red Leaf Pulp is set to build a 350 million project that will create 110 full-time permanent jobs. This is more proof that our province has a competitive business environment with incentives to attract investment, encourage value-added processing, and drive innovation. Mr. Speaker, as the throne speech affirmed, we must strengthen our international presence to diversify our markets and support the province's economic recovery. Many of my constituents were not aware that Saskatchewan is an international trader, exporting about 65% of the products we produce. This is an increase of nearly 35% this year alone. We currently have four trade and investment offices in Japan, India, Singapore, and China, with four additional offices scheduled to be operational next year in London, Dubai, Mexico City, and Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. These will expand our international network and provide opportunities to increase the value of our exports, as well as the number of international markets to which we export. It is by this expansion and presence that Saskatchewan will be recognized for our many assets on the world stage. Mr. Speaker, our investment of 31 million to build a new rare earth element processing facility will increase production and reduce dep dependency on Chinese imports, which currently accounts for 70% of the world's production. This facility is already under construction in Saskatoon. Additionally, the province is now home to the largest helium purification plant in Canada, which is expected to produce more than 50 million cubic feet of helium per year. Our goal is to produce 10% of the world's helium by 2030 to be used in medical research, semiconductor manufacturing, fiber optics, and advancements in nuclear power generation. Our helium action plan to be released this fall will outline measures to help us meet that objective. Mr. Speaker, the Enbridge Line 3 replacement pipeline, which moves Saskatchewan and Alberta oil to the United States, was completed last month. As the largest project in Enbridge's history, it will transport about 3.2 million barrels of oil per day. This and the other investment outlined in the throne speech will help Saskatchewan meet its growth plan goal of increasing oil production to 600,000 barrels per day. This is a great example of how Saskatchewan's energy sector will grow and create opportunity for decades to come. Mr. Speaker, our province has sequestered more than 40 million tons of carbon dioxide already and accounts for half the CO2 sequestered in Canada every year. We plan to build on that success by attracting more than 2 billion in new private investments for projects that will sequester more than 2 million tons of CO2 annually. Mr. Speaker, compared to our international competitors, Saskatchewan companies produce potash while releasing 50% fewer emissions. These type of innovation prove that Saskatchewan can be both profitable and environmentally conscious. Mr. Speaker, technology is another sector growing fast in our province. With venture capital investments of a record setting 171 million. Even Globe and Mail's list of Canada's top growing companies included four Saskatchewan technology companies Vandasta, Seven Shifts, Coconut Software, and S Media. Our government continues to support this sector 
through programs including the Saskatchewan Technology Startup Incentive and the Saskatchewan Advantage Innovation Fund. We will also continue backing of technology incubators like Colabs and Cultivator located in Sastun and Regina. We have nurtured 175 startups. These new companies have created nearly 500 jobs and generated 27 million in revenues. Recently, I attended an event with one of my colleagues from the chamber. He had brought his niece with him, and I was very impressed with what a polite, courteous young woman she was. Meeting her that day reminded me how important it is that we make good choices for our children as they are our future. Peace and love inside the family home significantly impacts the development of young minds. Children learn from what they witness. Therefore, it is so essential that we give families the supports they need so they can focus on creating a healthy home. Mr. Speaker, I am so proud that our government signed a 1.1 billion childcare deal with the federal government this August. This plan will create thousands of new childcare spaces, ensuring a wide variety of childcare options that are available for parents. Childcare fees will be reduced by 50% by the end of next year. It will then further reduce childcare costs to an average of $10 a day by 2025. This will bring so much relief to many families that struggle with childcare. Additionally, we will be supporting childcare workers by increasing their wages by up to $3 per hour. Mr. Speaker, not everyone is fortunate enough to have a good family environment. That's why it is so important for families experiencing violence to have access to immediate help and ongoing assistance. Earlier this year, our government's first family intervention rapid support team was established in the west central area of the province. It is with great relief that our government will be working this fall to establish two more first teams to support Saskatchewan families. During the inaugural pipe ceremony held in the legislative rotunda last Tuesday, prayers were brought by Elder AJ, included that this legislature will work for everyone, not just for some. This was extremely meaningful to me because I feel that this is what our government is truly working towards. Mr. Speaker, our Ministry of Social Services is working to ensure the services it provides is appropriate to the needs for all its clients. The Ministry is expanding the OP Kihi Waven program that offers culturally appropriate child welfare services to indigenous families requiring support. Our government was privileged to take part in a historic ceremony celebrating Kawase's First Nations official assumption of jurisdiction over <coughs> child welfare for its members. We are engaging with other First Nations interested in assuming responsibility for child welfare services delivered to their members. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to making communities safer. We have achieved this through the introduction of police and crisis teams and crime reduction teams. Expanding the Saskatchewan Crime Watch Advisory Network and creating the protection and response team to help respond to crime in rural Saskatchewan. In addition to this, our government will be adding 60 new police positions and 11 civilian positions to support new law enforcement initiatives as well as creating a new provincial protective services unit. This will bring together conservation officers, highway patrol officers, provincial capital commission community safety officers, safer communities and neighborhood officers, and deputy sheriffs working in the provincial court system all under one command. This unit will work closely with police and serve as law enforcement to help protect our communities while continuing to fill their core responsibilities. Mr. Speaker, we will also be creating the Saskatchewan Trafficking Response Team and a Warrant Enforcement and Suppression Team. The Saskatchewan Trafficking Response Team will target criminals 
that transport illegal drugs and weapons into the province, and will also work to combat human trafficking. This team will include 30 RCMP officers, six municipal police officers, and two criminal analysts. The, the Warrant Enforcement and Suppression Team will target dangerous offenders with outstanding warrants. This team will be staffed by eight officers from both RCMP and Municipal Police Services. We will give courts the option to order GPS electronic monitoring for repeat offenders who have committed serious crimes. Mr. Speaker, to further protect our citizens, we will be amending the Privacy Act to expand the remedies available for those victimized by the non-consensual distribution of intimate images and will introduce legislation to protect every worker from sexual harassment and all other forms of harassment in the workplace. This includes students, volunteers, self-employed people, contractors, making Saskatchewan a leader in Canada for ensuring our workplaces are safe and free from all forms of harassment. Mr. Speaker, our provincial parks are more popular than ever. With record visits and camping nights, this year the number of visitors to our parks was up 16% over the previous year. Our government has invested a record amount in facility and infrastructure improvements. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, our province has the resources to invest in healthcare and all the other important public services that I spoke of because our government has made the right investments and has kept our economy growing. To quote Ralph Watson, being positive in a negative situation is not naive, it is leadership. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sure. Sure.